All the righteousness which he has done shall not be remembered because of the unfaithfulness of, of which he is guilty and the sin which he has committed because of them he shall die. Which means the idea of, oh yeah, you know what, I was baptized, I was saved, I can no longer do my salvation. Let me tell you something. If you believe that, and you think you can be baptized and build, and build Jesus Christ's name as a Christian and live, and live like the devil, and but because you're baptized, you're still going to be saved? My friend, you are in grave error. Guys, welcome back to another video. Welcome back again. Today, we're going to continue with the um, topic. Last time we looked at um, what is sin. Today, we're going to look at what is iniquity. Remember that the first time we had that, you know, we saw that we thought there was sin, iniquity, abomination, and then so forth. Today is going to be iniquity. Now, um, let me start by saying that. Oh, come on. There we go. Um, so, for iniquity, there is. Iniquity is basically another term, right? That is used in the Bible to refer to sins that are committed on a regular basis. First thing, I'm going to say this. There is not a natural definition, okay, from the scriptures about what iniquity is, but there is one for sin. What I'm going to do is to use the scriptures to help Christians and mostly non-Christians know the difference between sin and iniquity, even though sometimes they are used interchangeably, okay? So, let me set that part straight. Now we understand what's going on. Let's get into it. First thing we're going to do is we're going to look at a verse from Psalms chapter 32 verse number 5 that says, I acknowledge my sin to you and my iniquity I have not hidden. I said I will confess my transgressions to the Lord and you forgive the iniquity of my sin. Now, mentioning the iniquity of my sin, I have no idea what that means. I don't know why that the psalmist used that kind of language or verbiage. If you ask me, I don't know what the iniquity of my sin is or means. So that let's get that right out of the gate. Let's look at um, what we can learn from this verse right here. So from this verse, I did some little digging to you know. I want to look for the word sin. In the Hebrew, it means katar. I'm going to put it, oh yeah, okay, meaning a sinful thing. It comes from kata, meaning to miss, to go wrong. Basically, it's like you miss the mark. There's a standard, and then you didn't get that standard, okay? So you miss the mark. Usually when people miss the standard or the mark, it's nothing that they do on purpose. It's usually, oh man, I missed it. That's why it says missed, Okay. Now, what does that mean? And this is why um, Paul said in chapter 7 of Romans, verse 7 to 12, What shall we say then? Is the law sin? Certainly not. On the contrary, I would, I would have not known sin except through the law. For I would not have known covetousness unless the law had said, You shall not covet. But sin, taking opportunity by the commandment, produced in me all manner of evil desire. For apart from the law, sin was dead. Which means, those that are preaching that um, once saved, always saved theory, or I guess, as they call it, basically means, because you are under grace, you cannot sin. There, if you are under grace, the law is no longer important. So you can... Uh, be saved and forever be saved and never lose your salvation. But right here, the, the um, apostle said, um, for apart from the law, sin was dead. So if there is no law because we are under grace, then we cannot sin. But I don't know. Um, I was alive, verse 9, once without the law, but when the law, when the commandment came, sin revived and I died. And the commandment was, which was to bring to life, I found to bring death. For sin, taken occasion by the commandment, deceived me, and by it killed me. Therefore, the law is holy, and the commandment is holy and just and good. Basically, I mean the law still exists. Um, 
Yeah, basically. Um, but let's move on to the next thing. Now, remember, we looked at iniquity, right? We looked at sin. Now let's look at what the word iniquity actually means. Iniquity, from the word in Hebrew, even, I'm going to put it that way, because I don't know how it's pronounced. I would say avoni, but I don't want to be wrong. It comes from the word ava, ava, I guess, meaning to bend, to twist, which means it can also mean to do wickedly or do wrong. Sin, basically, is like you miss the mark. Iniquity is you are doing the wrong thing. It's not just that you miss it, but you want to bend the standard. So, let's keep on looking at what, what else the Bible actually says. Um, so basically, usually, doing something wrong means it's a conscious decision. It's not by mistake, it happened. And it is not a one-time thing, it's a multitude of sins. So it relates more to the inner character and points to an intentional twisting of a given standard, which is, in Paul terms, God's commandment. It also relates to a person's character building, which is a habit. So, let's look at some figures about iniquity. Now, before I even go into that part, let me tell you, when it comes to iniquity, it's usually, you know what, no. Let's just get into it right now. Job 34, now, please read the whole chapter for all those verses, okay? I want to talk about. There is no darkness, no shadow of death, for the workers of iniquity may hide themselves. So, when it comes to iniquity, it's usually, when you say the term workers of iniquity, it you can rarely find it says workers of sin. Because sin was supposed to be something that is a mistake uh, by error, not I want to go and do the wrong thing. And that's why when it comes to iniquity, you usually say workers of iniquity, meaning it's something that you build upon. Okay? Let's keep on moving. Next verse. Psalm 5 verse 5. The boastful shall not stand in your sight. You hate all workers of iniquity. Psalm 6 verse 8. Depart from me, all you workers of iniquity. For the Lord have heard, has heard the voice of my weeping. Funny. That same verse right here, verse, chapter 6, verse 8, is the same thing that Jesus says to those when he comes again. Depart from me, you who are workers of iniquity. And they were saying, Lord, didn't we do this in your name? And you know, they were basically called, considered Christians. 20, Proverbs 28, verse 8. He who sows iniquity will reap sorrow, sorrow, and the rod of his anger will fail. Ezekiel 18, verse 24. But when a righteous man turns away from his righteousness and commits iniquity, and does according to all the abomination that the wicked man does, shall he live? All the righteousness which he has done shall not be remembered because of the unfaithfulness of which he is guilty and the sin which he has committed because of them he shall die. Which means the idea of, oh yeah, you know what, I was baptized, I was saved, I can no longer do my salvation. Let me tell you something. If you believe that and you think you can be baptized and bear, and bear Jesus Christ's name as a Christian and live, and live like the devil and but because you're baptized you're still going to be saved, my friend, you are in grave error. But people think I'm lying. Okay, let's keep on moving. Next thing, Ezekiel chapter 28, verse 15 and 18, talking about Satan. You are perfect in all your ways. And again, read the whole chapter. Until, from the day we were created, till iniquity was found in you. You defile your sanctuaries by the message of your iniquities, by the iniquity of your, of your trading, Therefore, I brought fire from your midst, it devoured you, and I turned you to ashes upon the earth in the sight of all who saw you. Luke 13, verse 27, But he will say, I will tell you, I do not know you, where you are from. Depart from me, what? All you workers of iniquity. That was right there, we just read in Psalm chapter 6, verse number 8. Same thing, workers of iniquity. 
Um, second Peter chapter 2, 15 to 17, they have forsaken the right way and gone astray, following the way of Balaam, the son of Baal, who loved the wages of unrighteousness, but he had he was rebuked for his iniquity. A dumb donkey speaking with a man's voice restrained the madness of the prophet. These are wells without water, clouds carried by a tempest, for whom is reserved the blackness of darkness for a fur. Lastly, before we do that recap, so I hope you guys understand that when the Bible uses the word iniquity, it's usually a not just like a one-time sin, for instance. Let's say I decide to go and sleep with a girl. And I did it one time, I repented of it, and then I've, I, I, and I've gone through, I don't know, two, three, four, five years not doing anything anymore. That would be a sin. It happened by a mistake, okay? Iniquity is, I saw this, I, I did this sin the first time, I enjoyed it. Yes, I could have repented, but when it came again, I did it again. And then it came again, I did it again. Whereas in the first time, even after the first time I, I did it, and then I repented, when it came again, I said no. So if every single time Satan brings that temptation to you, and they keep doing it, and 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 to the point where you start liking it, you know what? I'm just going to do it. That's what iniquity is. Whereas the sin is, yes, you fell to temptation, but then you get back up again, and then you fight against the next, the next temptation that comes. And that's the difference between sin and iniquity. So you have sex today, the first time, fornic you fornicated, you repented, and you stopped doing it. It's a sin. Even if it takes like three years, it will be considered a sin. But if you did it the first time, and then you keep doing it for months, years, whatever, that will be an iniquity. So, to recap, basically, what is iniquity? Well, in my opinion, iniquity is a sin that is being repeated on a regular basis. So, I hope I made it pretty clear and short. Uh, I was trying not to make it too long. So, hope you guys understand the difference, at least now. Um, if you guys know more than that, let me know in the comment section down below. Um, bring your questions. I will be glad to um, make some videos about the questions that you may have. Again, this was the Open Red TV. Hope to see you guys again. Until then, bye for now.